Okay, welcome to another episode of Roll or Die. Uh, Anton has a, a dream of having all of the Australian BJJ female black belts on as guests. So here we are. We have for you today Megan Evans. She was actually the first female that I knew that graded to blue belt. I remember when oh. I, we first started, she was the first uh, female that I knew that I actually saw get or didn't see her get promoted, but that I knew of that became a blue belt in my time. So thanks for joining wow. us, Megan. No problems. Thanks for having me. I'm, I'm really surprised about that, Kim. I thought there were a few, no, I mean, a few around. There were, like, I knew, for instance, Mary Ann was a purple belt when I started. Yeah. So I knew that she was at, you know, higher rank, but you were the first person I knew of that then went from white to blue, right. and blue to purple, et cetera. So it was really exciting for me. So, yeah, thanks for joining us. No worries. So what was it and like being a, what was it like being a, sorry I cut you off Kim but go, like, go, what was go. it like being a blue belt back in the days when like like the killer Marianne is a purple belt and you know like what's that what's the whole scene like like paint a bit of a picture if you feel like it about what um, it, yeah I don't really remember being aware of Marianne then there was another purple belt I don't know if I can't remember what her name Philippa was Cato? A really big a, no no in Melbourne um, okay. a really big girl and then she just disappeared. Yeah, mm. about when I was white belt. I can't remember her name yep. now. But, yeah, um, I remember too. It happens. Yeah, the first Renee? The high belt was that, that Renee? Was, sorry, Renee. Renee. Yes. Renee. yes. yes. Yep. 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 She was a little bit scary. She was. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there wouldn't have been many women in the in at all in BJJ. There weren't many, but Kate Wilson had got a blue belt, so I remember Kate being the the big one getting around. Here. Yes. Yeah. 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 And what have you been up to lately, Megan? Because um, you've had a bit of a change in lifestyle in the last 12 to 18 months. What's uh, What's been mm. going on for you off the Let's mats? give it like three years for jiu-jitsu related, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. which is a really long time. So, since I've only had my black belt for four and a half years, I've basically had three years of not doing much training. Um, I got injured and then COVID happened, so nobody was training much. But then I had a baby a year wow. ago, so... Um, yeah it's taken up a lot of time been trying right. to get in there but it's yeah logistically a little bit difficult, difficult. what's yeah. your what's your mindset about that like does it does it do you feel like um is there is it like guilt or is it like it's fine I've got this and it's just a matter of time till I'm doing it again like what, what's what kind of emotional spaces do you go through about that um physically I don't I'm like damn I should have like stayed in better shape um right. <laughs> especially after i get home from training and everything hurts i, I don't <laughs> think that's having a baby or not having a baby yeah. i think that's standard for us all yeah, yeah. i haven't had yeah, a baby probably. recently and i feel um, that every time oh, yeah yeah look i feel like i i I'm, i want to get back to being more regular but um baby aside after the last comp i pretty much said i'm pretty much done with going hard at comps and, yeah. and training the way I was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I had got yeah. injured and then I hit my knee pretty badly. And then I went to Japan, um, having only trained a couple of sessions before that comp, like the flight was already booked and everything. So I went ahead with it and really did really poorly. And I was like, I think I'm done. Like, right. Yeah. Like not, yeah. not enough attention on it to actually justify doing it, that sort of thing. Um. Just feeling old and with my job, I, if I do something, I like to sort of do it well. Um, and I would have just been showing up without doing the, prep. you know, the prep work that I at least felt that I needed to be doing. Yeah. That's good, yeah. 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 But maybe, that being, maybe I'll do some more master's stuff in the future. Just Yes. Yeah. Welcome to the <laughs> I know you You asked me when I was pregnant, you asked me if I wanted to compete in, I don't know, was the VIX or something. I was like, oh, yeah. maybe you would have, yeah. But yeah. <laughs> Maybe yeah, that being said, Megan, um, how are you feeling now? But back in the day, like you were the the yardstick, I suppose, or you were out there like competing at all the international events. Like um, for our listeners out there that might not know, you got a bronze at World Championships in 2016. Was that that was as a brown belt? Was that right? Um, yes, I got a bronze at brown belt. I got silver at purple belt. That's right. Um, yeah, and then I got double gold at, at Masters Worlds too. So yeah, that's right. And you went to Abu yeah. Dhabi a couple of times, yeah, representing we, Australia we as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I mean, you were like the pinnacle of um, of oh, really? jiu-jitsu. So I can <laughs> see why. That's I guess if say. you measure yourself against that, is that sort of part of what it is too that you're not able to get up 
to that level? So, or you're just saying you don't want to compete even locally anymore? Um, yeah, I, look, I, I just want to compete when I've done the work that I mm. feel that I can compete at the level that I want to, um, mm-hmm. given my, you know, restrictions. Um, yep. So if I felt like I was putting in the work that I could now, then I might be up for competing again. But, um, <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm not really looking to go overseas and compete against 20-year-olds again. Yeah. So Kim only calls you out basically when you haven't been training. Is that what I'm hearing? Like, uh, I did not that's what I said to her. She said, Come on our podcast. I'm like, why do you want to talk to me? <laughs> I mean, I mean in the VIX. Like she's like, hey, do you want to throw down at the VIX? <laughs> I, I message sorry, Megan, it wasn't specific to you. I message everyone. Come on, Anton. You know, when you're not at training, I'll message you. Where are you? Come on, come back to yeah. training. I yeah. do the same with the girls. I'm like, come on, yeah. I need some opponents. I need some yeah. girls. Yeah. That's all. So good. So good. Yeah. With, with, with your mindset, right? Like, like what actually had you get such great results? Like what are you have you been competing all your life? Or is it something that you just kind of like as a like I don't know, I don't know, everyone seems to have a slightly different context, but what drove you so hard to compete so much and then get such great results? Um I mean, I don't really think that they're that great results. I mean, other than winning a double gold at World Masters, Masters they that's, they that's gold something at... right there. That says it right. Yeah. It's, it's never enough for you. <laughs> but I mean, there are plenty of Australians that have, you know, won gold at Worlds, you know. Um, so it's like, oh, yeah, you know, I competed overseas and placed, but I don't think it's, you know, anything amazing. Um, if you compete enough and train enough, that's going to happen, I think. Mm. um but I, I guess just being competitive um you know I played basketball for a long time I started when I was five years old till I was well when I started jiu-jitsu I was still playing um when I was right. 27 so mm. doing that for 20 something years and competing overseas and um oh. sort of you competed overseas even, for basketball uh yeah I went to college in in the U.S. for, oh, wow. for basketball so that was five years of competing there um yeah I think I needed something other than just going to the gym to transition away from playing basketball something competitive yeah and was that how you discovered jiu-jitsu how did you actually come about it because especially yeah back in the day there wasn't a lot of females around or how did you discover yeah a a friend of mine from from basketball in college um she had tried jiu-jitsu um in uni she said so I don't know took a class or something in America and said oh yeah you'd like it you'd be good at it you know, have a go. So I was coming out of work one day and there was a gym over the other side of the, the street from where I was working. I was like, oh, yeah, that's that thing she was talking about. Let me let me have a go. Wow. So, yeah. I was, like, never into martial arts or anything like that as a kid. Or <laughs> So it was why? a bit of a change. Were you, were you, like, unfulfilled with the, like, the basketball training just wasn't cutting it for you? Or um, like- yeah, moving back to Australia and trying to play basketball here after being overseas, it was pretty disappointing, yeah. Yeah, okay. and my ankles are all messed up, and yeah, it wasn't mm. good. Yeah, I'd love yeah. to you to go down the path a bit about, about like what college basketball was like because that's mm. like something that a lot of people yeah. experience. Like, what what's what did you learn from that whole experience? Yeah, it was interesting experience. Like, so I got free uni, I got free master's degree as well, and got to play basketball all around the country and. Good experiences, but also it was tough. It was the, the coaches were pretty abusive. Um, they kind of tried to just run you into the ground and break you down mentally mm. by running sprints at 5 a.m. until you couldn't stand up anymore. Um, we had yeah. people going to the hospital. Like everybody walked away with major injuries. Mm. Um, I think it's changed a bit now. Um, they've changed the rules around you can transfer to different colleges without losing any, any eligibility. But back then you were kind of you were kind of stuck and wow. took whatever treatment you were given. So it wasn't well. Oh yeah, I played basketball in America, but it was yeah, it was tough. Yeah. Wow. Do you think that helped you at all with jujitsu or not really? Because people sort of yeah, sometimes yeah, struggle definitely. a bit psychologically jujitsu. But definitely, um, you know, when you're getting up running sprints at five a.m., you know, for two hours, go back. I would literally set my alarm for eight minutes get in bed get up and then have to go to class because you weren't allowed to miss a class or you'd be running more um so that 
travelled over to, you just go to Jiu-Jitsu, like you just go every day. That's what you do. There's no, should, do I feel like going today? You just go. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's yeah so training great. a lot at Jiu-Jitsu wasn't really a big jump for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love that. <laughs> I, love, I love the mindset. Like a lot of people don't agree with me on this, but I love the mindset of like, ignore your thoughts and feelings when it comes to things like training it doesn't matter how you feel that's got nothing to do Mm. with whether or not you train you know I mean maybe if you're injured that's a different story but I love that mindset I think it just actually gets results you know so yeah well I don't know if I did think or feel it was just it's just something you do like yeah Mm. great you you (laughs) have the work you got to use to you know that's yeah the way it was not not so much now but that's the way it was for a long time yeah yeah. And how was it for you, Megan, being a, a female on the mats back then? Because, I mean, like myself, there wasn't a lot of other girls around, so you probably were in the minority <clears throat> in mm-hmm. the club. And, and how did you go, like, just rolling with the guys all the time? Um, I don't think I had so many issues with it as, as some other women do. I'm, you know, especially when I was younger, I was in pretty good shape. I'm, I'm bigger than a lot of the girls are. Um, I feel like I could kind of hang with the guys and go hard with them um and I didn't really have any bad experiences of sexism or being excluded to a large degree um but you know it's also always good to have women on the mats and you know different style the the flexibility is a big adjustment I went when I wasn't training with women just showing up to comps and dealing with their guards or well I remember rolling with Sunny I think I was blue belt, and I was like, "What? What is this? I've never seen anything like this." Um, so that's a different. It's just a different look. It's, it's the way yeah. women move, and yeah, so it's good yeah. to train with women when I can. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you've been dead so you've dead definitely dead. seen. Okay. Sorry, Anton. You've Maybe. definitely seen that a big change in the in the, I guess, landscape of jujitsu since you've started, and and um, yeah. certainly around women and stuff like that. Can you talk about that at all? Um. Yeah, I mean, I haven't, I feel like I haven't been around as much comps and everything the last few years to, to have my view on that. But mm. yeah, it's, it's completely different. Like pretty much every gym has women at it now. And yeah. back in the day, it was very rare to have yeah. for any gym to have women. Yeah. For sure. Do you reckon, so, do you reckon, and this is like, I don't know, like I don't want to trigger anything with our listeners, but like sometimes I say, I hear that like women competing is still an issue. Like there's not enough women competing, like especially from Kim at black belt level for sure. Right. But Mm -hmm. then other times, like I hear that there is heaps of women competing now just at certain comps, like they're picking and choosing is women competing in jujitsu an issue now, or is it, is that kind of fading to the background and there's plenty of women competing and you know, what what are you girls thoughts on that at the moment? I mean, overseas, there's plenty. If you go to the overseas comps, it's plenty of women. Um, Mm -hmm. This, I don't know how long ago, four or five years ago, there seemed to be a big shift with the high about women just stopped competing and that's when I was still trying to compete in Australia. Right. Yeah. Um, I'm not really sure what happened there, but, um, I yeah, guess- I don't know if it was just the AFBJJ comps that there was sort of a turn against them trying to do some of the smaller ones or push them out of business or there was, there was something going on. But mm-hmm. yeah, you might know a bit yeah. more about that, Kim. I think that, um, I mean, there's always, females, unfortunately, is just always going to be a minority in jiu-jitsu. And so I suppose that the comps are like a reflection of the total number of women. You know, if there's only 10% of women at any club, you know, if, if total membership, 10% of them are women, then, of course, the numbers on the comps are going to be less. There's mm-hmm. not going to be as many women competing as men. You just can't. But yeah. I'm hoping over time, as there's more and more women coming through, like there's a lot of, uh, I know, certainly brown belt women that are getting close to their black Mm -hmm. and so when they come through and there's I mean the number of blue belt women now competing or not is just enormous there's thousands of blue belt women all over Australia now which I mean when Megan and I were blue belts there was probably a a dozen or two dozen that I knew of what about about asking women to compete like you do it Kim I love how you do it you're like getting on the phone you're messaging people (laughs) hey let's fight let's do this let's compete I personally like that, right? But what about the, like, is there, there's an argument for people should just compete if they want to compete, not be kind of continually coerced to compete. Mm-hmm. Coerced to compete. I think they should be, personally. I think, like, it calls people into action, but I'm not sure. Like, I try to do that with, you know, people who I think will, you know, roll with me. Like, if everybody came together and said, come on, let's compete, let's create a culture of competing, 
it's more likely to cause people to action. But obviously, you're going to feel bad if someone comes and has a really bad experience or gets injured or whatever. But what is the view about, like, women uniting and encouraging each other to compete more? Is that a good thing? I yeah. think so. I mean, it's there are group. I mean, on our social media platforms, there's, like, groups, you know, black belt, brown belt women in Australia groups, and you can um, go in there and request, you know, training sessions or competing together. So, I, yeah, obviously I've got my views on it. What do you think, Megan? Um, yeah, I think it's, it's good to encourage other women to compete. I don't necessarily think everyone should compete. Um, <clears throat> you know, everybody has different things going on. Um, you know, like I was saying, if I wasn't able to do the, the work to feel like I'm in a position to compete, I wouldn't want to compete. Um, and some people might be in that position permanently if they can only train once a week or whenever they can. I don't feel like there should be any pressure to compete. Um, I think going back to what you were saying earlier about like the higher ranked women sort of dropped off a bit. I think what I see um, is that I guess a lot of women start to just in their twenties or thirties even. And then as they have kids like yourself, it's sort of harder to train regularly or hard enough to compete. And so it seems like, unfortunately, the child rearing sort of is left to the mums, even though a lot of dads who do jiu-jitsu still can get to training and still compete. Mm. I guess, unfortunately, when mm. um, females are, comp- are looking to compete, it's just a bit harder to, yeah. to find the time to commit to that, I guess. Would you yeah, say? I'd say that's true um, in general. I don't, I'm not sure if that's exactly what happened. Um, in Melbourne, um, yeah, because I'm not sure if they were all older necessarily and all had kids. So mm, true, I'm not sure, yeah. but maybe you calling everyone up and dragging them. <laughs> I had all my kids before I started you did too, so I'm not. Uh, there's no more babies <laughs> coming for me. That's going to stop me. But yeah. yeah, I definitely would rather be doing masters and, like you said, going against twenty year olds because that's just uh, maybe that's yeah. it. Actually, yeah. maybe it's just like okay, Kim goes well. Why should I bother competing? I'm only competing against like Megan. Jess Fraser, like, or whoever it is, whoever is the black belt at the time. It's like the same women I see all the time at the comps. I can just go to their gyms and roll with them if I want to. Like, there's not a deep enough pool to, to actually even test yourself, really, maybe, or you know what I mean? So maybe it's just like there's not enough pool to justify the money. Maybe it's about the money, uh, just speculating on that. But like, if you're not going to get new matches mm-hmm. with new blood and you don't, you know, and you already know these people, you've competed against them 10 times, what's the point, you know? Yeah, I mean, it could be that because you've got to register, pay, and then you don't know who's going to jump in. That's always a risk, especially with the women. Yeah. 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 And Megan, are you comfortable to talk at all about your journey of jiu jitsu? Like you, um, so you started at, at Ground Zero, if we could sort of talk about that at all, and then um, how things went for you through the belts and uh, how. How did you do it for you there? Yeah, so I was there until I was a blue belt and then started training at Sia Polista with Carlos in the city. Um, yeah, he has really great jiu-jitsu. Len, Len a lot is um, can't criticise his jiu-jitsu in any way at all. Um, mm-hmm. Taught me heaps and, um, yeah, and I, I you know, any success I had in competitions was from training in that team there. Um then I started training with um, at one of his affiliates with Dean Liebenberg out in Caroline Springs, it was. Um, and I guess he had some falling out with Dean and Dean split from Carlos. And then, I, you know, I, I was living closer to Dean's affiliate, Sam Cannons, in, in um, Airport West. So I started training with him as well. And then they had their own issues. So I kind of ended up with Sam for a while there. Um, so they're all, you know, all Sea Polista guys Got back it. in the day. And real sea of of their own gyms. Yeah. Sorry? There's a real Sea Polista flavour to your training, to your community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, was with that group for a long time. And then I moved moved house, you know, when I was having the baby, I moved um, out east closer to my family and was, um, oh, I only did a few sessions, but out at immersion and until I moved house again I was hoping to train there you know a bit more permanently but it was hard to get to at the time and yeah. um, then I moved so I've been training at Perkins for the last few months yeah that's such a cool journey yeah. I, I love Thank this you. journey it gives hope because like I'm really attached to my gym like I don't I can't even imagine mm-hmm. life but things keep changing in my gym coaches leave and go 
there's people I love there, yeah. you know, so it's hard for me there. But I always, like, it's in the back of my mind. I actually can change gyms if I ever want to. Like, and people like you make it, like, the journey is alive and well for you. Like, it goes through different yeah. spaces, but it's fine. You know what I mean? You can move around. Well, I didn't really have that plan of being unhappy with the gym and wanting to to move on. Other people just kind of moved around me and I got caught up in, you know, where I was training was suddenly under someone else. So. What can you do? And you <laughs> I mean, more travel. recently, yeah. you know, moving out east, I wasn't going to travel from, you know, eastern suburbs to up to um, to near the, near the airport. That's Absolutely, with yeah. work and everything. Five, within five k's of your gym, that's the core customer base. Um, Anthony Farosh was telling us that it's like if you're a gym owner, your customer yeah. base is not people who are coming to you for your name, even if you're Anthony Brosh. It's mm. people in five Ks of your gym. That's how far they're willing to travel for their jiu-jitsu. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. So so yes, yeah, so I've been training with, with Perkins for a while and it's um now that I've turned 40, they're all old school guys and you know, old school jujitsu. <laughs> so it's kind of good fit right now. That's awesome. <laughs> Love it. Um, <laughs> Anton, can you may allow it so that I can share my screen? Yeah. I don't know yeah. if you can do that. Um, Megan, yeah. I don't know if you're comfortable in sharing this. I just Googled <laughs> your name and um, come up with some before and after photos from back I in did. 2016 when you were um, competing. Yeah. Um, yeah they're pretty... I never wanted them on the internet. <laughs> 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 that was not my choice. Well, now they're going to go on the I'm internet the again. Okay, wait. So I'm not going to just, just so you know, right? I do I teach casual classes, right? And I have this guy who comes each week. He drives an hour and a half each way for the class. It's amazing. Oh, wow. it blows me away. Wow. Yeah. Oh, oh my yeah. goodness. So this is this is how Jack she was. This is why I was so scared of Megan when she was competing. Because look at wow. that. Man. Oh my yeah. lord. Yeah. Thanks wow. for that, Kim. No worries. Anytime. She'll never come back on this podcast again now, now that I've. Uh, that is a physique right there. How do there. I stop sharing? Holy. <laughs> I'm trying to stop sharing and I don't know how to. So. We just but have to keep it up for the rest of it. We show. just have to keep it up. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. So back being the host. You? How tall are you, Megan? Um, like 174-ish. Okay. Oh, okay. I'm 174. So, and yeah. you, had, okay. and, and you had a basketball career. Is 174 tall for a female basketball? No, I was the shortest, but right. I used to be able to jump. Not anymore, but I used to be you able to jump. You had the hops. All right. Yeah, and hops, yeah. <laughs> yeah. My son's I playing basketball. It's... I love it. I love the yeah. whole journey. It's so much fun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's still relatively tall for a female, though, like especially in jiu-jitsu. Like you said, I yeah. guess you were one of the bigger girls. And, um, yeah. I mean, can you talk at all to us? I know that um, Jody has experienced um, sometimes being a, a bigger female can have its own issues. So mm. I know, like, for me as a smaller female, sometimes I feel like I guess guys are quite chivalrous and they they hold back a bit. Yeah. How was it for you being a, like, bigger female if if you don't mind me saying, yeah. especially in the early days, like when you don't have a lot of technique and stuff like that, and a guy might hold back a little bit and then suddenly because you're stronger, they kind of match you with that. How, how's that gone for you? Uh, when when I was younger and competing a lot, I'd just give it back to them. We'd just go hard and it would just escalate, and escalate which was fine at the time. Um, as I got older and high about, um, I didn't like it so much. And mm. um uh, you know, not many guys, but some guys would not want to be beaten by a woman and they would try to hurt you or try to, you know, do things that mm. were not great. So, you know, you knew you knew who to avoid or just not, not rolling with you as, as a rule. Did you ever have a, a conversation with them about it or talk to them about it or you would prefer to just kind of avoid them and just leave it at that? Um, depends on the person, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm. um no generally i just avoid yeah because it is a tricky you one i think some people were just going hard and that that's fine mm. um you know please don't bend my fingers you know we'd have that kind of conversation mm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like yeah. the ones that want to hurt you what can you say like no nah, i'm not dealing with your ego like no nah, i'm good yeah, it, it is. Yeah. I think it's a tricky, um, and I think Anton, we've talked about this a bit as well on the podcast that um, 
it is a tricky road to navigate for guys rolling with a female sometimes. Mm-hmm. So there's a it is a real balance between going too hard and sometimes they, they just don't go hard enough. Like they just lie there yeah. almost like don't give any resistance. So I think that for me anyway, my experience, the more females in a club generally the easier it is for guys to roll with them because it, it's no big deal. Like it's not mm-hmm. a strange phenomenon to have a female partner. So yeah, yeah. that's my my thoughts on it. That the more women around, the easier it's going to be for everyone. Yeah. So yeah. That it's not such a strange thing. Yeah. Yeah. And it probably would annoy me more when the guy would just lie there and not fight at all. Like mm. the only thing i'll say about that i totally agree with you i don't deny it exists but i also know it exists between male to male and probably female to female as well Mm -hmm. like i know that i always try and adjust myself i'm like i don't know there's some there's my son says i have a lack of killer instinct and he's actually correct it's like i want my power to be the same as the other person plus a micro but that's what makes me a crap competitor in a lot of ways (laughs) because i just want to slightly beat them so they don't feel bad i feel good everyone's happy you know um and there's plenty of people who will just like like yeah just just basically lower their power because they i don't know why They'll, they'll all have their own reasons but i definitely find it with I, I'll, like if I'm rolling against a white belt, he's much smaller. I'm going to drop my power to almost nothing. I'm going to pretty much lie there, you know. But you know, I, but I, sometimes I get it wrong, and they are probably offended by that actually as well. You know, now that I yeah. think about it, now that you say it. But yeah, it's yeah. actually yeah, and yeah. Maybe sorry, go ahead. No, no, you go, you go. No, I was just saying. Yeah, I don't really see that much difference between women as a whole, and um, you need to look at them on an individual level as you would a smaller guy or a guy that's not as strong it's you know adjust how you're old to the individual so mm. um i don't know if how men roll with women is such an issue as some guys are just dangerous you know for Great. anyone smaller yeah. especially white belts the most dangerous people on the planet is yes. a, is a, is a <laughs> recurring comment yeah, right, yeah, that's right <laughs> and Megan, tell us about motherhood. How how's that for you? Has it changed you? Like how's how's things going with your little man? Like how how's all that side of things? Um, good. Yeah, probably just not sleeping as much as I was before. And mm-hmm. did you have uh, an okay pregnancy? How did you go through? Pregnancy? Yeah, pretty crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No um, was that was just know. towards the end of COVID? Yeah, you were doing yeah. It through lockdowns and stuff. Yeah, so it was good. I didn't really have to leave the house, like being massive or try to get dressed mm. in anything outside of tracky pants. Try to so that- get dressed. I like that. <laughs> didn't have but to I guess it had- or try to get dressed. <laughs> so good. <laughs> but I yeah. feel like it would have had its own set of issues, though, like in terms of the risk of, you know, the virus. And was there any concern for you on that front of uh, um, extra cautious? Not really, but I wasn't really going anywhere. I didn't feel like I was, you know, taking that big of a risk. I was working from home. So, yeah, yeah. You know, other than going into a few appointments, I wasn't really seeing that, that many bad. people. Yeah. And how, how is he uh, now? Because he's just turned one. So. Yeah. He's just yeah. Turned one. Yeah. He's, um, <laughs> he's got a strong personality. Yeah. You can fight him against the Giles baby. We can have a, like a baby off. We'll have to see if this um, versus absolute. Yeah. <laughs> but yes. that's if you don't put him into basketball. Like, what, what's your preference? Like, what would you like your young man to play basketball? Uh, I think you'll no. I think you'll need to do jiu-jitsu. Um, you know, I think kids all should do jiu-jitsu. Um, basketball, if he wants to, yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah, we'll we'll see about that. <laughs> fantastic (laughs) awesome well look I hope it wasn't too painful for you it's been I know you're saying you didn't think you'd have much to say on on this podcast or anything you've had heaps heaps to say so no it's been really awesome thank you so much for um giving up your time you know you're a busy woman working mum and um yeah it's been really great to chat with you like I said Anton's been bugging us to get all the female jiu-jitsu black belts on so yeah you got someone lined up 
If you feel no, we don't have anyone else lined up. Yeah, if you can suggest them, like they're 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 private creatures, the female black belt in its natural <laughs> habitat. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, yeah, like think uh, of a few, yeah. <laughs> so, thank you for coming out and uh, playing with us. It's been awesome. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, thank you. Do you have having, it, yeah. any yeah, final our... words of wisdom or any parting thoughts? Wanted to share with our that? listeners about. Uh, uh, advice i mean you've been in the game for what like 14 years or so even if you think half yeah, of it was a couple like of years of it not something not like active that. but yeah you've been around for ages so like you're one of the longest as i said jiu-jitsu females that i know so yeah yeah i mean after you know 13 14 years just look after your hands my hands <laughs> <You're telling laughs> even you're after barely carrying for three years <laughs> First session back, I'm like, my fingers. Nah. Oh, I can't even get a ring on this finger. That's yeah, my ring was bad. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Look after your hands. Yeah. So. No, that's, that's actually probably awesome. a great name for this episode. Me- Megan look- Evans, look after your hands. <laughs> I like yes, it. That's that's right. Fantastic. All right. So we'll have this episode out in a couple of weeks. So um, if you could share it, if you're on social media or anything like that, I know you're, like Anton said, a, a retiring shy, like all the other female black belts, but yeah, that'd be awesome. And um, yeah, hopefully I can get down to Perkins and have a role with you and Jody soon. And um, yeah, we can share the mats again. Yeah, I'll, I'll come out your way too. Like I used yeah, to. Yeah, that's it. Friday We're just nights, living yeah. around the corner. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I want to come around. I've got mats I'm coming home. down. I'm <laughs> coming down. Let me know when you girls are getting together. I'm there. Yeah. yeah. Sounds awesome. Good. All right. Thanks. Guys. Okay. Thank Bye. you. Bye.